Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today I just want to show you around my grow room a little bit. We didn't do a proper tour in a long time, but I've been working a little bit. I changed a few things, created a few more places for my orchids to sit, also purchased some stuff that I want to install. So I just want to show you what has changed in my grow room. And because somebody asked recently if the grow room tours shall make a comeback, Actually, no. <laughs> I will make a tour soon after I install what I want to install. But since many of you asked me, let's address that a little bit. You might have noticed that I didn't make a greenhouse slash green room tour in a year and a half, something of the sorts. And that's because I got bored of it. Being that I post videos every day, almost, I also make the what's in bloom every month, seeing the orchids that were in bloom and I didn't feature. I also have the requested updates and through the simple fact that I do upload orchid content on a regular basis, on a daily basis, I don't find the point of actually making a tour every single month. Orchids grow very, very slow. I don't think you're gonna see anything different. So I don't really see the point of actually making another filler type of video, let's call it like that. Also, I don't change my green room as often as to show you something new and spectacular every month. And because of all of this, it's really, really boring for me to film and to edit. It has become that way. And if it bores me to watch it while I edit it, I'm pretty sure there are a few of you guys who will get bored of it as well. So, you know, I wanna put the content that I kinda wanna watch out there. And if I don't wanna watch my orchids on a monthly basis, all of them, all of the collection, then maybe some of you will not want to watch it either. Does it make sense? So anyway, I don't consider my tours to be very fascinating at this point. I'd rather just show you about orchids, talk more about orchids, make stuff informative. But every once in a while, I do make a big change or I do change around my growth space enough to show it to you. And today is one of those days when I'm gonna show you what changed in the growth space. It's not a tour. Uh, the tour will come at some point, but here we go. So you remember this corner, maybe you don't, and P.S. I'm still arranging and working on stuff. This is my western side of the growth space. That's the western window. And in here, I decided to extend my highlight places in the grow room. The IKEA stands are now used right here with my catacetum orchids or catacetum type, catacetonae, to be politically correct. Somebody actually really disliked the fact that I call them catacetums, all of them. But hey, what to do? Nobody's perfect. So the catacetum orchids are all here. They receive a little less light than catleas. Then I have a row of catleas here. And right there in front, I'm still using the old Vanda hanger, the IKEA one, and I just placed a few more Vandas there. The Vanda corner remained the same. I still have my double hanger here, and I've seen it around in home improvement stores a lot. I've also seen it in some videos, I don't remember where. It was somebody from the USA, so I'm sure you can find this style of hanger at home improvement stores. It's really great for a bigger collection of Vandas because it has two bars and you can set the height. You can actually make them both equal or you can make one lower than the other. And you can see I have it in this setup, in this situation. So this is the west corner. I've also moved my epidendrums here. That guy bloomed. He's orange, really exciting. Vanda's pretty much all highlight orchids. And on my other IKEA shelves, again, we have the highlight orchids, the ones that I believe will do better in natural light rather than artificial light. So up there, and yes, I'm not using my broken lens, the 50 millimeter. This one is one that actually has a zoom, it's just not as clear. So you can see I have catleas, mostly epidendrums, and all sorts of highlight orchids, the Ida Locusta, um, the Dendrobium Spectabile right there, and my Renanthera, Brassavola, and so on. Here I moved my Maxillaria, she bloomed another few blooms, so that's great. And a few more orchids that require kind of bright light, but as you can see, they are smaller. The seedlings, the Catlea seedlings are there now. And downwards, we have the Paphiopetalums. Somebody was a little shocked that I'm keeping Paphiopetalums in the southern window, but these actually require brighter light. The model leaves Paphiopetalums don't require that much light. 
these guys, they're doing very, very well. And P.S. A little spoiler, my hybrid, what's it called? Doctor, not doctor, Judge, Judge Philip, yes. Judge Philip has a flower spike. Oh boy, isn't this a great uh, period for Paphiopetalums? The Encyclias, you already know, they're back there, you cannot see them. Some Dendrobiums in the front and pretty much this is it. And on this side, as you can see, we have some empty shelves. Yes, we need to work on the shelves. Upstairs, we have my own sediums. You can see a sherry baby in bloom there, smells like chocolate. Uh, I'm not sure if this side will remain like this, but they're all there at the moment. The Dendrobium Phalaenopsis types. Usually this side receives direct sunshine, but right now the sun is super, super, super high. So at this point, it doesn't receive all that much light. For two or three months out of the year, I don't have all that much light here. So I'm just supplementing a little bit, but it's okay, the sun will go down in a month or two and we'll have light once again. And downstairs we have my Phalaenopsis species and a few moderate-leafed Paphiopetalums and also a Vanta that I need to repot. And here we have yet another IKEA stand where I placed a few more Oncidiums. Yet again, this is a bright location, it just doesn't receive direct sunshine at the moment. It will in about two months. But for these guys, it's pretty okay. Now comes the troubling side. So here are my Miltodiopsis. This will be a dedicated space for the cooler growers. It's on the floor where cool air sits. I will have a dedicated fan and my humidifier. I just need to work on it, dedicate some time to do it. And there is some empty space there, which will be filled with all of these orchids. Then moving up, oh my, this doesn't look right, does it? Well, yeah, I do have empty spaces on the shelf. I also have all sorts of orchids that look like they don't belong. They actually don't belong. I just put them there because I need to find a place for them. Problem with this shelf is, if you remember, I had an LED strip. Well, it's not there anymore, it burned. And also, I think you can tell even in the video, I don't have even light. I have this shade, light, shade, light situation that is not ideal. I also don't have light or all that much light on the edge of the shelf. And for this reason, I discovered that not many orchids prefer this shelf. I mean, more orchids actually like it down here because light is more even than up there. And that's a problem and I decided to do something about it but let me just show you the final shelf, the Phalaenopsis shelf and it, it looks pretty good right now because everybody's in bloom. It happens once a year but most of the times, as you might know, Phalaenopsis are just lettuces. But now it looks really pretty. With the Phalaenopsis, I do intend to repot them all in semi-hydro, they're not all in semi-hydro. I think you already know the story with the dehydration in the clay pots. Long story short, the Phalaenopsis I need to work on, but I do believe this is where they will sit pretty much from now on. They really don't require a lot of light. And here they actually receive a little bit of direct sunshine in about two months as the sun is setting down. And also in the morning they receive a lot of bright light because I have a white building on the other side of my wall which reflects so much light in the morning. And for like four hours or five hours my greenhouse is all lit up but now with direct sunshine. Anyway, let's return a little bit to this corner. Actually not corner, this shelf. It has become clear to me that I need to do something about the light. Uh, I never actually intended to grow strictly under artificial light Valenopsis and even Paphiopetalums, they do okay here. Problem is, I don't really have much low light plants. Most of my plants are cattleyas and worm growers. Now these worm growers actually prefer a lot, a lot of light. So being there helps no one. I cannot grow cattleyas in this uh, shelf, not because they don't do well under artificial light, but because I don't have sufficient light. And I also have the shade light, shade light unevenness situation. So I needed to do something, I knew what I wanted to do, I just needed the budget for it and I finally got it and here's what I want to do. Ta-da! These, my friends, are LED shop lights, but they're just so even. They are rectangles just perfect for my long shelf there. Now these are not the only ones that will go in there, I have a few smaller ones just to make sure that all of my shelf is lit up. But there we go. So let me give you some specs for these. Uh, they are 4000 Kelvin light. It's the light that I actually like to look at. For my shelves, I don't want to use 
pink grow lights. I want to look at my shelves and for orchids I discovered it doesn't really matter all that much. As you can see the 4000K is warm white. I particularly cannot stand cold white and I also cannot really stand very yellow light because I'm filming and it looks horrible on camera so I got the whitest of the white with a little bit of a warmth to it. In the store actually they look really really pretty. They're very bright as well so this big guy is 5900 lumens. Yeah, there we go. So we have the specs here, 5,900 lumens, which is a lot. And in the shelf I have two of these, which are very big, and four smaller ones. And the small ones are 3,000 something lumens. In almost four meters, I will have 12,000 lumens plus another 24,000 lumens. That's a heck of a lot of light. So in my little, which is not little, shelf here, I will actually be able to grow whatever orchid my heart desires as long as it fits and things will fit a lot better because do you see my current light situation is actually quite low it's 20 centimeters low so 20 centimeters from this shelf are occupied by the light above the light i cannot get any light to the leaf also i cannot let leaves touch the actual light there are a lot of difficulties with these lights actually and it's just uneven well, with the shop light, which as you can see looks pretty seamless and I assure you in the store it looks absolutely beautiful, I will actually gain space on a vertical. And even if I will have taller plants here, they will receive a lot more light and will be a lot more suited because the light will just be further up. Now the light fixtures are actually 30 centimeters width and I have 40 centimeters width on my shelf, the upper shelf, which means that I will be able to place more orchids on the side. And I know the camera doesn't actually show it very well. In the nighttime, I would be able to show you a lot better, but I have this portion of my shelf, half of my shelf receives almost no light from my LEDs. It's just natural light and it's just not enough. So the width of these fixtures should be enough to deliver me light until the edge of my shelf. So this is the most exciting thing that I actually have planned and I cannot wait to install them and yeah, to move orchids around a bit. This room can actually hold a lot of orchids, which is great. But you know, light-wise, I don't have the most fortunate situation. It's okay though, things will change and I do believe the light quantity overall will be sufficient for cattleyas and other highlight plants on that shelf as well. And that's pretty much it. These are my, let's say, plans for the future. And when I install the fixtures, maybe I'm gonna do a complete tour then. Although this video was a little bit like a tour, wasn't it? But anyway, these have been the changes that happened in my grow room recently. I was working on them for quite a lot of time. And my grow space was never super, super clean, but now I'm working on that as well. It's just so tiring. Remember I told you the other day that everything breaks? Well, yeah, everything breaks lately, including my boyfriend. We actually ended up in the hospital the other day. But don't worry, everything is okay. It's just, you know, not pleasant. Such is life. You cannot always have good stuff and happy, happy days. The important thing is to be optimistic, work, and do your best every day, I guess. So anyway, on that note, let us end it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this little tour of my grow room and stay tuned for updates. And with that said, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, subscribe to my channel for daily videos, regular updates and tutorials and all of those things. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video, particularly because YouTube is apparently changing things once again and even if you're subscribed to a channel it doesn't mean you will see the videos in order of publishing youtube wants to arrange what videos you see according to algorithms so keep in mind i do post daily very rarely i don't post today but if you didn't see any of my videos for a few days check back to my channel most probably i did post but youtube just didn't show you that i posted so that said i'll see you all next time bye